forgiving, more joyful, for that is our birthright. We are here to be happy. We're here to overcome the illusion of fear and tune in to our natural true state which is only love. often choose to focus on that which brings us down and makes us unhappy. Peace is only a thought away. And we're so blessed to have this awesome group of souls who are the wind beneath our wings, who support us through our fear, honor us, and love us. We're in this acceptance and allowing true healing occurs. There is so much power in each and every one of us, just waiting for us to let go, surrender, be still, and know that you are worthy of nothing less than the kingdom of heaven that is your true state of being. Be with that truth for just a moment.
You are the light of the world. You are divine and you are holy. Never forget this for anything the world has to offer. We give thanks. We accept this. And know that we are reborn, restored, and renewed. Every cell in our being is filled with light. Every thought in our mind is filled with love. And our hearts are open, offering love to ourselves and each other. So it is. Thank <laughs> going to um, start our Facebook Live so uh, we can share our message and our love and our light with many, many folks beyond this room. And uh, I'm grateful for the technology. So just give me a minute and we will begin. Good morning from the Namaste Center here in Flat Rock, North Carolina, and just really grateful for everyone out there in Facebook land to um, uh, join us today, and thank you so much because we just are such a blessed community here, and uh, it's awesome that we get to share who we are, and uh, might even surprise you a little bit, uh, some of the things that come from this preacher's mouth here um, <laughs> and that can go many ways believe me but uh, I'm going to give a, a little bit of a tribute today to Billy Graham who passed away this week February 21st and um, uh, and I think it's interesting I think it's very interesting although I may be more interfaith um, than his um, his message I do find that there's many things that he taught that he lived by that certainly can be of support and good for all of us. So I want to honor uh, Reverend Graham for all the blessings that he brought into this world through his powerful message. And um, he, uh, Billy Graham preached the gospel of Jesus to 215 million uh, people. That's amazing, 215 million people through his cr crusades and simulcasts around the world. He passed away February 21st, 2018, at his home in Montreat, just up the up the road from here. And actually, he was 99 years old, so God bless him, 99. And uh, I don't know if you all saw the the uh, caravan that took him from Montreat to Charlotte. It was it was beautiful. It was just people standing. You know, you thought it would have been the president or 
the Queen of England, the way people were lined up along the roads and honoring uh, this man and his good work. So it, it was really beautiful to see that. And, um, you know, it's, it, it says here, although we are grieving, heaven rejoices. And as we know, Billy Graham was not afraid to die. And what, I mean, what a triumph to be in this body, in this world, uh, and overcome the fear of death. And that is, is one of the greatest gifts we can give to ourselves, knowing that we're eternal beings. And that this experience here on this planet Earth is just a blip on the screen. That's it. But yet we take it so seriously. We get so distracted. We get so upset about things that really don't mean anything in eternity. One of Ellen's lines that she says often is in the realm of eternity, what does this really matter? And uh, when you get upset over things and you think about it, what does it really matter? All that really matters is that our souls are, are happy and awake and loving. And, and uh, he demonstrated that in a huge way. Um, I love this quote he says. He says, my home is in heaven. I'm just passing through this world. And that's what we're all doing. You know, we're just, our home is in heaven. And although I'm not sure that heaven is necessarily paved with golden streets and uh, the beautiful gates, you know, that we hear about so often in certain denominations, and I don't know, heaven to me, in my experience, is more of a state of being, a state of mind. And so heaven is here and, and now, in my mind, it's not a destination. So every moment we're choosing heaven or hell. Am I choosing to be in heaven right now? or hell. And it's a matter of am I connecting with source, spirit, or am I choosing to get caught up in the, the mundane little ego tactics that keep us in judgment and angry. And, and the big thing is all every time we choose that, we're choosing to be separate. We're choosing to be separate from source, and we're choosing to be separate from each other. So um, really powerful, powerful stuff, you know? And it's a decision, and it's a practice, and it's a choice we make in every moment. I love this. You know, he and his wife Ruth were, were just uh, madly in love. Uh, I heard a, uh, one time, you know, they, they had several children, and, uh, you know, he was on the road a lot, and she was home to really take care of the home and the, uh, the children, which is not an easy task, as, as mothers out there know. I have dogs and I know it's not an easy task, so I can't even imagine having kids. But uh, um, one time she was asked, well, you know, with him gone all the time, have you ever thought about divorcing him? She goes, divorce, no, murder, yes. <laughs> so, uh, so she did have a, a great, uh, you know, they, they were real people. They were real people. On her gravestone, as a matter of fact, it says, end of construction, thank you for your patience. That's on her gravestone, so end of construction. So, uh, anything that has humor, I am, I'm all for it, because I, I am a knower and believer. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of great joy. And, you know, I, there, are, there are subjects that he and I were not in alignment with. I, I'm not going to deny that. Um, but, you know, that's not for me to judge, not for me to condemn, uh, or for me to make wrong in any way, because, uh, you know, we're all on our own journey here. But um, I, I really am getting the message loud and clear that, you know, we've, we've got to find a way to find that which connects us and unifies us, that which brings uh, commonality. And we've got something in common with everybody if we just choose to find it. So what I'm choosing to do today is finding messages from uh, Reverend Graham that do connect us and join us and that can serve the greater good and to honor him on all his paths. I mean, all of his teachings because he certainly touched millions and millions of people. And um, so this is, uh, this is very interesting to me. First of all, I didn't know this. Uh, he was a Democrat, which is interesting. I also found that this quote, and this is something I just pray, you know, that we could live by. He said he declined to sign or endorse political statements, and he distanced himself from the Christian right. I don't want to see religious bigotry in any form. 
It would disturb me if there was a wedding between the religious fundamentals, fundamentalist and the political right. The hard right has no interest in religion except to manipulate it. Okay, just saying. So uh, I think that we, uh, I, I don't see a place where, I, I do believe in separation personally of church and state. I know that's a personal decision and by no means does that not mean that I uh, believe that we need to bring God into everything, or love into everything, whatever makes it you know, work for you, love, kindness, generous spirit, whatever, but bring that into everything. But religion, religion and, and uh, politics, I don't think that's a good mix. And uh, I think we're seeing some of the effects of that, not only in this country, but uh, around the world, where extremists um, certainly uh, take a stronghold on on the need to manipulate government. Just saying. So we're here today to um, talk about uh, volunteerism. Kelly in a few minutes is going to be talking about uh, service, serving from the heart. And I, I really believe more than ever, I, I mean always, I, I think that the church as the spiritual centers, whatever you want to call it, Namaste Center, here we are, is uh, it's about us really having a place where we can get uh, spiritually fed. We obviously have Sunday mornings, but we have lots of stuff going on through the week. But also coming together with the desire to heal our own stuff, but support each other in anything that they may be going through. And so one thing he said, uh, churchgoers are like coals in a fire. When they cling together, they keep the flame aglow. When they separate, they die out. And I think that that's so, so important. Um, you know, yeah, we, we get our feelings hurt and sometimes we don't like what someone did or said. I mean, especially here at Namaste, we're pretty, you know, we're not a big group. We're pretty close, tight knit, okay? And so it's like a family, it really is. So where there's more interaction here than maybe a lot of other larger churches. So we're having, experiences that kind of trigger us well that's not a bad thing you know when we get triggered that's an opportunity for healing because if i'm getting triggered that means it's unhealed okay but most people some this is too intimate for some people it just is uh because we we are coming together making a commitment to just lay it out there and we can be our ugly selves we can be our beautiful selves but we're coming together with a common goal to wake up from the dream to really lead with our hearts and so it's uh, for some people it's kind of like they want to go in the church sit in the back and just sneak out at the end of the service and that's cool too because there's something that's why there's lots of different churches and lots of different uh, places to go for worship and uh, it's about <laughs> everyone finding where they belong many churches of all persuasions are hiring research agencies to poll neighborhoods asking what kind of church they prefer. Mm -hmm. Then the local churches design themselves to fit the desires of people. True faith and spirit demands that demands selflessness is being replaced by trendy religions. And I think that, you know, I, I've had people come to me about church building and you gotta do this and you gotta have that. And uh, there's a place for it, but it's not, as of today, and I'm always open, maybe tomorrow I'll give you a survey, I don't know. But I'm more about just letting spirit be in charge of our future. I don't know what, I don't think we need a big production up here, you know, uh, I don't think, I think we just connect at a real heart-to-heart -heart level with our simplicity. And I'm seeking to, to make that connection, and I'm finding that simple, to me, to me, feels really good. Um, it's, it's less stressful. I'm not putting on a Broadway play here, in other words. It's just about us opening our hearts and connecting with each other. And um, so I find that uh, this also is an interesting statement. Man is a social animal, gregarious by nature, and finds his greatest sense of security and satisfaction in the company of others who share our interests and attitudes. And I will say man and woman, excuse me. Of all the many groups into which humans have collected themselves, of the many tribes, clans, organizations, and societies throughout history, um, 
None has been so powerful, so far-reaching, or more universal than the church. And, you know, we are uh, social beings. And, and people, you know, is Namaste Center a church? Well, legally, yeah, we are. And what is a church? I think a church is, is a, a, a home for God, to gather, to, to learn, to be better people, to uh, support each other and love and honor each other. So, yeah, in that total respect, we are a church. We're not really denominational. We're interfaith. We embrace all truths that lead to love. And so I've been, in the spirit of volunteering, God has given us two hands, one to receive with and one to give with. And we're not cisterns made for hoarding or channels made for sharing. So it's that exchange. And, and um, you know, it's a lot of people have... Uh, uh, I, this used to happen in Florida and it happens here. You mentioned tithing and, and you might as some people that just <laughs> shuts down the uh, no I don't want to hear anything about tithing that's why I left my last church um, and uh, but you know there's there's still bills to pay things that we have to to use money for okay and that's a really touchy subject for a lot of people and so it's I can speak from personal experience that the more I give, the more I get back. And this is not just about money. This is, of course, money, but it's about kindness. I like what Oprah says, if there's something you think you're lacking in your life, give it away. Because it's giving and receiving are one in truth. If I'm giving from fear, it's probably not going to be uh, that productive. So give from your heart. Really come here and I, I just say, Spirit, everything that I am, everything that I have is for you, um, period. And uh, show me, you know, what, how much to write the check for, how to be of service, what soup to make this week for the group, whatever it is, you know, it's, it's really about, uh, it's really about being open and of service to each other. Giving and receiving are one in truth, because in truth, we're not separate, period. Um, I want to, you know, there's, my weeks are spent, and I know uh, with, with people going through a lot of challenges. Uh, I get calls, I get emails, I meet with people, um, people are hurting, and, and many in this room, okay? So, uh, and, um, hmm. It's, that's a challenge. Sometimes it's, it's like, wow. Uh, you just really want to do everything you can to help somebody, and, and you hope you're saying and doing the right thing, but people are, are really hurting in the world today. It's not an easy place to be. And um, I love this. The will of God will not take us where the grace of God can't sustain us. So no matter what, no matter how dark it seems, we can overcome it. I, I know that. I've overcome in my own life, so I can speak from experience. No, I haven't had a child murdered. I haven't had a huge uh, tragedy in my life, but I've had lots and lots and lots of trials. And I know that when I choose to stay engaged in that and see myself as a victim and blame and judge, then it just gets worse and worse and worse. But when I choose to pause, take that breath and say, Holy Spirit, I don't want to stay in this crap anymore. I really don't. I want to, I want to be happy. I want to be joyful. And it's just like that miracle. It shifts. And sometimes I have to ask myself a million times a day, maybe not a million, but a lot. Uh, you know, Holy Spirit, uh, I choose peace. You know, I choose peace instead of that. As soon as that thought is wanting to distract me from being connected to source or love, Instead of engaging, bring myself back to love. Oh, and it works. It works, it works, it works. I can't stress that enough. And this one is, I always like this affirmation. Instead, when you're praying for something or, or manifesting something, I, and, you know, I always say this or something better. And we always think that, um, I've shared this a number of times, but I think it, it's just such a, a, a easy, powerful, relatable way to say it and express it, and that is that um, uh, that the Holy Spirit will never take anything away from us without giving us something better in return. 
And so our will and God's will are not separate. So we think we know what we really need and what's going to make us the happiest. And I've come to be firsthand on that, that I really don't know. But really what we're all seeking is the same thing. We're seeking acceptance. We're seeking love. We're seeking connection. Uh, and, and it's there for the asking. It really is. So it's just, we're here to be more like Christ. We're here to be more like Buddha. We're here to be more loving beings. And we can build this through a practice. Um, I love this. I, years ago, when there was a fellow who came and spoke at our center, he was a course in Florida, Course in Miracles author, lecturer, John Mundy. He's a great guy. He was actually a former Methodist minister who really became a fan of A Course in Miracles, a student, avid student, and teacher, and author. And he talked about um, forgiveness. And he says, you know, he talked about forgiveness. Uh, you haven't really forgiven until you've forgotten. In other words, he said that we often say, oh, well, I forgive you, I bury the hatchet. But he says, until you forget where that hatchet was buried, you really haven't forgiven. <laughs> and, and that really struck home because, you know, we, this is radical forgiveness. There's a fellow, Colin Tipping, who wrote a book, uh, Radical Forgiveness. He used to speak at our center often in Florida. Radical forgiveness is just, yeah, it's putting it all out there and that I'm willing and I don't need to hold on to my reasoning or my uh, make, make my judgments reasonable by any means. It's saying that no, I just let it all go. I wanna feel free and I wanna see the face of Christ in each and every brother that I know. Well, the way uh, John Mundy also expressed it, he goes, you know, if you wanna check your mind chatter and you think you're really spiritual and uh, he goes, just think of this, could you walk through downtown Hendersonville and with a megaphone on your head and every thought that came into your mind was, was being uh, sent out to, you know, oh, ugly shirt, oh, whatever, you know, uh, or oh, I don't like you, or oh, you know, and that's, that's being awake, okay, so if you're awake, okay, you could wear that megaphone. Uh, I'm not there yet. Uh, Billy Graham's way of saying this, he says a real Christian is one who can give his pet parrot to the town gossip. So, <laughs> I thought that was great. Um, when he also goes on to say when wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, something is lost. But when character is lost, all is lost. So, you know, our character is so important, who we are, you know, we, we're here to be gods, I'll just say it, we are here to be like God, we're created in the likeness and image of spirit, of God, and what is God? Love, so we're here to be that, and so when we know that, when we act from that place, um, we can't be harmed by anything in the world, which is really awesome, to know that I that I am uh, not a body, I am free, I am a spirit created me. How awesome is that? Um, so this prayer uh, that, um, that I will close with because there's so many beautiful things I could share. Um, and it's, a, it's his mantra in the morning, or it was his prayer in the morning. Therefore I live for today, certain of finding at sunrise guidance and strength for the way power for each moment of weakness, hope for each moment of pain, comfort for every sorrow, sunshine and joy after rain. So thank you, uh, Reverend Graham, for the many blessings. And, and I know you're uh, dancing in heaven with your beautiful wife and your friends and all those who adored you. And, um, and hopefully my parents, because we used to watch uh, Billy Graham Crusade on black and white TV uh, when I was a kid. That was an event, okay? So I'm sure that he's up there preaching his good word, and, and thank you for your service. Godspeed, and namaste. Namaste. So I'm going to, uh, we're going to have a treat today. Kelly who is Kelly Smith, is, uh, has, she showed up here a few years ago with uh, Julie and Terry. They brought her to a Thanksgiving um, dinner uh, that we had here, and Kelly just started coming after that. And, and uh, 
she's grown so much and she talk about baggage spiritually that she came here with uh, there was a lot but she something shifted something touched her heart and she knew that this was something she wanted to look into and I'm glad she did because Kelly's grown leaps and bounds uh, she's committed to her path she's devoted to to really walking in mastery as as we all are and as a result, she's uh, become our volunteer coordinator, but, but besides that, she shares so much more with our community and the world, which is her beautiful radiant light. And uh, so Kelly's gonna talk to us for a few minutes about giving from the heart, serving from the heart. So let's give Kelly a welcome. Well, before I begin, I just wanna honor you, Charlotte. I want to say thank you for doing what you do, for sharing from your heart, and for willingly serving and taking on the role that you do as the leader here at the Namaste Center. So if we could all <laughs> Well, good morning, Soul Family, and Namaste. Namaste. No, don't touch it. Just, okay. just make sure you're in there. All right. So, uh, namaste, the word namaste, meaning nothing more than the God within me honors the God within you. When I first heard that mysterious word namaste, especially coming from an evangelical Christian background, I felt suspicious. Of course, I immediately judged what I didn't understand and thought it might have something to do with an Eastern cult or religion. Little did I know that I would be given the absolute honor and privilege to serve at the Namaste Center, a center like none other, a center that practices love for all, no one excluded, a center that thrives on service. How may I serve you? Please note the I is really, really means we throughout my talk. May I serve you by teaching a spiritual class about a subject that I need to learn most about? May I counsel you in a non-judgmental way and hopefully create a safe environment for healing to take place? May I stop by your home and bring you over a pot of homemade soup when you're not feeling well and under the weather? How may I serve you? May I support you in a cause? Carry that box of heavy books in that you're about to donate. Throw on a pair of blue jeans and help you clean up your garden. How about I come and visit you in your hospital room, attend a committee meeting, or facilitate a prayer vigil? How may I serve you? May I cry with you, hold you, and remind you that you are not alone as you grieve the loss of a loved one? May I give you some money to help you buy groceries <coughs> or help you pay your exuberant electric bill? May I call you and listen quietly as you vent and work on solving a problem in your life or may I attend a milestone celebration in your honor? Needless to say, there are many ways to serve here at the Namaste Center. Checking out our website will give you an idea of all the programs, classes, and events happening here and also some of the many ways our volunteers serve. Community outreach, donating food and clothing to the I Am Ministry, and setting up and tearing down tables for the exciting events within this center are wonderful ways to serve. 
attending classes, healing sessions, and support groups are great ways to serve as well. Working on ourselves first allows us to serve in a healthy and whole way. Serving by being generous with your monetary donations is always appreciated and necessary to keep our center operating. It costs a lot of money to run this center and do what we do, and what a most honoring way to serve. In April, 10 of us from the center will become ordained ministers. We choose to serve in this capacity. However, you don't have to be an ordained minister to serve. We are all ministers, and we all serve in different roles. Here at the Namaste Center, we serve from our hearts, willingly and without expectations of receiving anything in return. However, the more we serve, the more we receive, and our needs are continually met. We trust and understand that, our lovingly cared, that we are lovingly cared for by our divine creator, and we willingly share our love and blessings with one another and with the world around us. We are an ego-free zone, a judgment-free zone, and a dogma-free zone. We do not discriminate nor do we ca cause or support separation or duality. We do not discriminate or we do not stri we strive for peace in all circumstances and we do not support an us and them mentality. We believe we are one and we choose to serve only with the highest degree of love. How important is serving at this center? All we have to do is take a look at the condition of the world around us. Current events remind us that now is the time to serve, to stand for truth, and to, to unite together in love. Never has there been a better time for this center to step up to the plate and honor our Creator and our world with service. We serve with love, and love heals. Perhaps you are asking how you might serve. May I suggest going inward and asking the God of your understanding how and where you may serve best. We all have an important role to play, and we all play an important part. No role or part is better than the other. They are all equally important and they are all equally needed now more than ever. When we all unite together and choose to love one another unconditionally and without judgment, change will most certainly occur. We, are, we already experience this within our center, and we are eager to share this gift. We are here to serve. Will you serve with us? Will you play your part? Do you truly believe that the Namaste Center is making a difference in our community and in our world? Do you believe that the Namaste Center is making a difference in your life? I believe it, and I experience it firsthand. I am extremely grateful for how this center has opened its arms for me without judgment and has accepted and loved me for who I am and where I am. Volunteering and serving is the least I can do to show my appreciation for all that this center gives to me. I would like to personally thank Charlotte, the volunteers, and each and every one of you for serving the way that you do. Our center and our service will not go unnoticed. We are the Namaste Center 
and we are making a huge difference in this world. We are raising the vibration and the meaning of love without judgment. And we are showing the world that this can be done. I'm just so grateful to be able to serve and to be a part of it. Namaste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.